Okay, Tuesday morning in the kingdom, and I'm hurting. I think I walked 500 miles yesterday. Yes, that's a rock and roll song, because I went from the hot rod truck to the story straighter and back, and then back and forth, back and forth, to pick and find the parts, but that's unreal. But I was so glad that I have knowledge, and I knew that the fuel pump was overpressuring. Yes, that's the joys of reading drama book. I read it like a newspaper, because the newspapers, well, they're crap these days. Yes, it's all crap. All right, so we woke up this morning to plus 11, but feels like plus 11. And then on the yo-yo scale, plus 52 Fahrenheit, but feels like plus 52. We had a perfect sunset in the evening, and then I think about 1 o'clock in the morning, the rains came. So I got up out of bed, had a pee, and then I opened the tote to collect that rainwater. But guess what? The smoke in the air, now I have black water in that tote. Oh well, it's the thought that counts, plus I needed my exercise going out in my jammies to remove, remove the cover. Alright, so today's going to be a slow day, the staff's teeth are bothering her, and I gotta finish up the loose ends, yes. No sunshine over here, there's nothing, unreal. But it was a good weekend. Three days of fun and frolic, except for sober me on Sunday morning. What was I thinking? Tr communicating with those people that refused any dealings with me as I tried to gift away my parents' estate. Yes, the baby boomers were taught to save money so the government can take it all now. Yes, and the lawyers. And as soon as you question the lawyers, they turn Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hyde and they say, these are not your mother's wishes. Well, I don't think mother wanted to be screwed over for four frickin' years. It was cut and dry. She ran, worked in the military, was well organized with the paperwork. It's supposed to be cut and dry she passed away you know do the burial divide the funds everything was laid out but the lawyers and the government make it last forever oh we've been mailing letters out and they're not getting to the other place well maybe put the postage on it maybe put a stamp on it or whatever 101 excuses lawyers do it all the time mailing letters that don't arrive yes I've had numerous other friends who are dealt with their estates, or that's the number one thing with the lawyers. We mailed letters, they never arrived, yes, yeah? so that it can t drag it on and drag it on because it gives them more money. Yes, more money for the lawyers. I'll be writing a book on Mother's Estate, you know, on how, oh, how bad it went. And the thing is, is nobody was uh, fight nobody's fighting over anything. It's just cut and dry. It's just laid out like mother wanted. But oh well. All right. My estate's going to be simple. I'm gone. The staff just uh, buries me in the backyard and continues on. Just like the great lockdowns. Everybody thought I was dead and gone because nobody's seen me. The staff just went in and out of the kingdom, brought the food and the beverage, and I was good for two years. Nobody's seen me. Yeah, if we didn't have these daily intros, everybody think I'm gone. Yeah, pretty smart thinking, but it's going to be cut and dry for me. All right, let's continue the quest. We got loose ends to finish up, and I don't know. We're going to relax today. I'm so sore from yesterday. Oh, that was unreal, but we did it. Finished a project my dad started 15 years ago. Yes. All right. Let's go. Here comes the boss. Okay. To continue on with mother's estate, she passed away in 2020, 10 years after dad. So she had 10 years to get dad's uh, collection of 250 cars and all his assets organized. So in 2015, she sent me an email, told me this uh, sedan delivery is ready to go. Mother and I never talked after dad's funeral, and she said it's ready to go. And I said, no, this sedan delivery is the sister's. I never call her my sister because of the things she's done to me. Yeah, she forgot to tell me mother passed away, and she runs a funeral home. So this sedan delivery is supposed to be the sister's, but... Uh, the sister married an American fellow who's basically a used car salesman and they bought a funeral home. So the husband or whatever always wanted to take it to the States. Said he was going to fix it up for the family, but in actuality he would flip it. Okay, so this sedan delivery spent five years in the late 70s at a body shop in Nainat, Manitoba. That's why the gauges, everything's uh, uh, masking taped over, okay? So this thing is all original, it's a Brandon car, and dad bought it in 1974, okay? So dad's wishes were that the sister and her husband were never to get this car because the husband would flip it. Yes, and dad was so right, because that's what they did to dad's 47 Monarch Coupe. 
after the Hot Rod Club of Brandon or all his friends that reassembled it and got it a roadworthy, well, guess what? They got a picture in the Brandon Sun of Man in Brandon, the news local newspaper. The next day, it was in the United States of America sold. So that's the way the sister works. So in 2015, this had to come north. Mother said, get it out of the yard. So I hired some friends to go get it. They went and got it, okay? So it ended up in the kingdom, May long weekend, 2015. Okay, it's a sedan delivery. It has one back door. If it has two back doors, it's a panel truck. This is basically a car chassis. It's not uh, heavy duty. So they loaded it up with all the stuff and it arrived in the kingdom. And I w went and spent three weeks and got it on the road. Yes, before things changed, it's registered in my name. I have all the legal paperwork, okay? That was Dad's wishes. Mother followed through with Dad's wishes that the sister was never to get this car, knowing that she would flip it. And they did it with the 47 Monarch Coupe. So I've kept this car, how would you say, up and running since 2015. This is another project my dad started and never finished. I had it on the road in three weeks. Yes, three weeks. Brand new tires, new brakes, new everything. And dad being the flower child of the 60s, there was an icicle or a huge chunk of ice fell on the car. So back in the 70s, we just kicked it up with our feet. And then when it was at the body shop, they cut a hole in the roof and they were going to put a VW sunroof in it. Yes, the flower childs of the 60s. Yes. So what we did was took an 85 Chevy hood a square body hood, cut it to get the ridge in there and put it on. Yes, it's temporary. Everything we do up here is temporary because we don't have a body shop. It's next to impossible to get paint or any of that kind of stuff shipped to the end of the world because it can freeze because we're winter while we have snow 10 months of the year. So we have this vehicle on the road and that's what I said. Mother was organizing her estate before she went and I've honored dad's agreement that the sister would never get this car in fear of it being flipped. So that's why it's in the family and that's why we drive it and make sure everybody knows because it's sitting around. It spent 32 years in storage and the best thing for it is to drive around and wave at the ladies of Whoville. Okay, another project my dad started and never finished. He had this 38 GMC. Yes, he had it up on the road in 77, did all the body work, showed it at car shows in Brandon, showing how to do body work and did details. He wanted to build a camper on the back and travel in his retirement. Well, guess what? In 1997, it was out behind the shop and the motor was seized. Yes, the motor was seized. Yes, it was mixed in with all his collection of 250 cars. So I cut a deal with dad in 1997 and it came north to Whoville here. So I got it up and running. We farted around with it. We never really did much to it. And then when I, the great lockdowns hit, that's when we started focusing and spending time on it, okay? But also too, in that 20 years of ownership, you can buy everything for this stuff, like the kingpins, the tie rod ends, everything like that came from Rock Auto because they're GM part numbers and you can buy it from Rock Auto. We bought a lot of stuff over the years from Jim Carter Chevy, Jim Carter Chevy truck parts. I think it's in Missouri. I remember when you used to get the photocopied catalog from them. You go right, uh, go through it and pick the parts you need and mail, mail them a money order and U.S. funds and he'd mail you the parts back. We still buy from Jim Carter. He has a lot of the oddball stuff that you can't get. But the thing is, is when I started retiring and realizing I'm working for nothing, so why don't I just work on myself? Plus, becoming a published author on Amazon and then the YouTube channel, that's my only income. Yes, that's it. So we were able to do everything. So the big, great success this summer was the service body on the back. I think we've only had the service body, I think four or five years, and we knew it was going on here. We knew there was a space in the here, but you gotta have fuel. So we'll be putting a fuel tank in there. But the main thing is everything is falling into place, you know, and my dad, I think if mother passed away first, Dad would have had a fun time finishing in some of the projects he wanted, but he kept getting sidetracked and mother held all the money. So when they passed away, okay, mother controlled the checkbook most of the life, basically after 1974, because he never really bought anything after 74 and mother controlled everything. So when they passed away, both of them, there's a large sum of money in the bank account. So when the baby boomers have all that money, guess what? The lawyers, the sister and the government just want it. When mother had the auction sale, I think in 2013 or 14 at the uh, acreage just outside of Brandon, 
She sent me a large check for my share. I ripped up the check and took a picture of it and said, it's not my money. It's not mine. It's your money. You know, that's your retirement fund. So when you get, start gifting me money from the estate, I try to give it away or gave it away because it's not my money. It's their money for retirement. It's sad to see how much the lawyers and the government and the sister take. All right, let's go have a quick coffee and then we can start working on the 37 tribute truck in memory of dad. Okay, a nice day of rain on and off. When it rains, it comes down hard and heavy. So we weren't planning on hiding in the hose shack. So this is what we're doing. All right, let's scroll this way. I'll go nice and slow so everybody doesn't get dizzy like me. All right, we worked too hard yesterday, but we weren't planning on doing carburetors. But we need a carb for that 37 Dodge tribute truck. All right, so here is the carbs. I have no idea what we're doing. I think we bought the wrong kit because I didn't know that the casting numbers of the park numbers or whatever down right in here can't really turn the carb you really have to buff to get them clean so i assume okay this carburetor we're kind of piecing together this is it here we bought it in 2000 it was for the truck we had a chevy square body named kermit yes kermit because it was green and i'm colorblind so i asked somebody what color it is and they said kermit the frog green so it got the name kermit so i think we were traveling somewhere in the carburetor malfunction so we just was able to purchase one and bolt it on that was with the good old days yeah that was 2000 so i've laid out all the pieces because it ended up being a parts carb and the only reason i'm choosing this one here because it has the uh, same outlet fuel fitting as the 37 dodge hot rod truck from 1984 so we're piecing it together of course the kit we have is not all there and stuff but we didn't know what we're doing i have no idea I think there's supposed to be a new seal here and a couple down there but that's why i follow along on that rochester facebook page and that cliff ruggles comes forward and explains everything everybody hates these uh blue i guess that's blue it's gray to me uh accelerator pump rubbers because they fall apart in the ethanol gas but up here we don't get that because it's frozen yes it freezes right away so i think we're quite good with using the blue one but everybody has a different color i forget what it is but they use if you're doing a carb down south so this here project today is to take it apart screw it up or i mean fix it or refresh it put it back together and we know it's screwed up and then we can learn because that's the whole idea I never did carburetors or anything because my dad did it, all right? So I got tired of walking back and forth to the trailer, the storage trailer where his toolbox is. So I just brought the shelves. Yeah, the drawers. So these are all his carburetor tools, okay? And these are the little nicky knacks. You always need nicky knacks because you drop something, you'll never find it. So that's why in what 15 years of his stuff being here after his death i haven't touched his nicky knacks because i knew there's going to be a day when i'm going to be looking for that nicky knack all right so i do remember these as a kid going to find them for dad they have different ends on them he has about three or four of these and that's for the adjustment screws right here because when this car is fully assembled on a car and this is totally flexible so this slides down to the other end like that and then you kind of nook hook it in Ooh, hand and eye so then you can use this end to adjust okay because the carbs have different things so that'll be today's project wander around assemble a carburetor to see it fail and then hopefully the rain stops so we can finish uh how would you say seal some leaks on that 37 dodge hot rod truck or the tribute truck because after well tomorrow if it's not uh sunshine if it's not raining the staff and i are back to work the boss is upset because we're not working but we're having fun okay two o'clock in the kingdom and i went for a late lunch because i went to the trailer parts trailer number seven i think it is yes and i brought all the quadrajet carburetors in yes and i like this one here i tagged it here that it starts flooding yes that was 2022 guess what it's electric it's the fuel pump over pressuring so i learned a lot in the last two years so i figured i better lay this stuff out because it's getting confusing and today's events was to work how to say wait out the rain and learn how not to do a carburetor all right so i'm copying this one here that's the original one for the 37 dodge it has the thermo choke on it but this one here was off kermit the truck see it is kermit all right and it had a choke pulled on it 
I think in the end we reduced it down to uh, just a two barrel carburetor because this has been disconnected. So I pieced it together from the pieces that were in that box, okay? So I think we got it working and now I can have a choke. So that's the main thing is to get it up and running and learn more. Yes, now that I've gotten into these carburetors, I can learn more. My dad was phenomenal with carburetors because that's what he did and he taught it at the college as an auto mechanic instructor. But before he was... Uh, an instructor he was a how would you say high performance uh engine man and stuff like that he built a lot of stock cars and had fun and good times so while well, he built a 37 dodge hot rod truck with that motor and it lasted my uh, wasted youth all right seems how the sun has come out let's venture out and put a carburetor on oh no now it looks like it's gonna rain Okay, coffee time in the kingdom and I'm hustling here. The sun was shining, the rain stopped, so I was take to pop the intake manifold off again. But also too, I drained the antifreeze gasket gooed up the front where the solder was rotten and leaking a bit yesterday. Plus we changed out the temperature gauge to a quality one. I took a chance, yes, take a chance on me, the ABBA song, yes, that this old gauge would work, so I had to replace it because it's never moved yesterday at all. So the problem we have with this intake manifold I didn't like the gasket thing that came with it, so I put it on with lots of silicone, and then we had a leak over there. So we popped it off quickly yesterday and changed it out. We used the Felk Flex Pro gasket, and this cylinder, or this engine block, ooh, engine block, that's a train locomotive. This motor block has the holes in the front here, in the back for the little rubbers. Oh, I'm hooked. Oh, I'm hooked again. All right. So I went and found the, through the inventory, I figured, okay, we'll put these ones on because the other ones were squishing out and pushing off to the side because there's this little plastic hangs down. So I put these on. Well, guess what? It leaked. Just look at it. It just crushed this stuff right out. So here we go again. Pop the intake manifold off and put in the factory one. There's the little lippy thing. See them there? All right. So when I grew up, nobody used gasket goo. Or anything like that you use it as a precautionary measure so on this gasket here we just put a little bit here all right and a little bit on the other side that's it you never used the gasket goo and got carried away but now in the modern world of 2024 or the new world of 2024 we're basically using the gasket as a spacer and the gasket goes holding the thing together and freaking real but oh well we're having fun I think we better hustle our tushy and get a carburetor on and get some more fluid back in this thing. Maybe we can have voom voom with some idle today. Okay, I'm in the hose shack and I dragged out these alter, I'm mean just HEIs, okay? So we're ordering them on Rock Auto and they're coming with this funny top, Darth helmet or wherever it was from Spaceballs helmet, okay? These are junk, they don't work, they quit, okay? So uh, here we go, no freaking good in 2022. So here we have brand new items, I think they're probably 200 bucks or 225 landed here, maybe 250 bucks landed here, Canadian. So here we are out here on the truck. Okay, I'm surprised my carburetor, well, it wasn't a rebuild, uh, the refresh. Yeah, we'll call it a refresh. It actually worked, okay? So we got it to idle. All right, so look at the, the HEI distributor thingy me bob in here. That's 2018, it was taken out of the Lynn tractor because it was acting up. I grabbed it because it had the wires. That's all basically, oh, I'm hooked again. All right, so it's actually up and running, so it doesn't idle very well or whatever but use your temperature gun and put it on the spark plug so we have two weak cylinders over here but also too i was adjusting the carburetor over there and i didn't have the radiator cap on tight and it airlocked so i didn't drill a hole in the thermostat right there you need a pinhole we do it on all the heavy equipment the trucks everything i don't know what i didn't why i didn't do it on this one or the other motor so I created my own problems. 
So I'm adjusting the carburetor and it sprayed. So I got covered in hot antifreeze, everything got soaked. So I had to lift it up and move the truck over here. So I used the uh, mini hoe. Don't worry about the back of the frame. The back of the frame has to be changed out for a truck box to go on. This Dodge stuff is very flimsy. Yes, even back in 47, it was flimsy, just like the 86 Dodge we had, the head hanger, very flimsy. So we dragged it over here, gave it a pressure wash. So most likely, the HEI and everything got wet because we sprayed everything down. The carburetor ran good for over an hour now, okay? And it didn't leak, it's got zoom zoom. So I have to learn about setting these idle screw things at the front here and a few other things. So kind of, how would you say, Mickey Mouse patch or refresh, it actually worked out well. So we're very pleased. The truck uh, runs and it's getting better and better. So if we had the brand new HEI in it with brand new spark plugs and a few other things, it would have worked well, but uh, it didn't work out. We just basically pieced it together. So this is the, probably the most antifreeze I've ever gone through or wasted on this motor. So the intake doesn't seem to be leaking, but basically it's gasket goo with the gaskets all, uh, what would you say, in, in, the, in this filler space or whatever. All right, very pleased. All right, let's put some of these toys away. We're quitting early today because we're going to drink and celebrate another project I finished for my dad. Yes, he could have done this, you know. Oh, wait, he was married to mother. Yes, 45 years they were married. I can't even go 45 weeks with the same woman, 45 months with the same woman, 45. Oh, we better not get into the minutes. All right, let's get to work. Tuesday morning in Whoville, and it's just after 10 a.m. And as you can see, it is pretty wet out here. It actually rained most of the night, and it was raining a bit this morning as well. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 13 degrees Celsius, which is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. I don't think we're doing much in the kingdom today. My dad is pretty sore from the weekend, so let's head inside, let the dogs out, and make breakfast. 1 p.m. and I just finished up lunch. I had soup and a sandwich today since my teeth are still pretty sore. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 14 degrees Celsius, which is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, it is pretty windy out here and it's been on and off raining most of the morning. Now it's time to head inside, finish up my laundry, let the dogs out, give them a treat. And then around 3 p.m. I'll go to the kingdom and see how my dad's up to. Almost 3 p.m. and I just got the quad out and I'm getting ready to head over to the kingdom and I notice these purplish blue flowers growing in my front yard here. I've never seen them before so I'm going to have to look up to see what they are. But now let's head over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Just after 3 p.m. and I made to the kingdom, I brought my dad his supper tonight. He's going to have pork chops and I'll head on down to the shop and see what he's up to. Pretty sure it's his coffee time so he should be coming to the house right away. I don't think we're doing anything today because it is pretty cloudy out here as you can see and it kind of looks like it's going to start raining again. Almost 3.30 and I'm officially done in the kingdom. We're not doing anything today. It looks like it's going to rain again. So my dad's just tinkering around in the shop and the hoe shack here. So I'll grab my dog treats and head on back into Whoville and do the weather around 5 or so. 5 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 16 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty nice out there this afternoon and hasn't rained yet, but as you can see, it is still pretty cloudy. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in, make supper, and end my day. Okay, 6 o'clock in the kingdom and it's chilling off, cooling off and it's chilly and the wind's there. So there's a 37 Dodge Tribute truck in front of the shop. Yes, what did we do today? Nothing. We basically put some gaskets in a carburetor, called it good, fixed some leaks from yesterday. It's just basically playtime. That's all it is. Brand new parts sitting on the shelf or junk. I don't know what we did today. It was frustrating. Just playtime. That's all it was. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer to celebrate. It's kind of running, but I'm missing on a couple of cylinders. But oh well. We'll figure it out and have a bath to get this antifreeze out of my hair. Well, what's left of my hair. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, and make a video. Talk to you later.